Uh, it's not so bad this time because I don't have to bring across the water, uh, but because I'm using um, ultra purified water, I need to make it in the lab and then bring it over. So we need two people to carry a massive butt of water over every week. That's difficult. How do you make ultra pure water? Um, firstly, it's, um, it's distilled um, using a distillery, which essentially takes out um, the bigger um, little impurities that are in the water. And then it's put through a deionizer, which takes out the ions. Um, so it's the, virtually the purest water you can come across. Why such pure water, mate? Why not just use uh, water out of the tap? Uh, because what I'm doing is I'm looking at the fertility of the soils and the water that we drink in our houses um, has some nutrients in it. So we've got to make sure we take them out. Otherwise, I'll be adding nutrients into the, the soil, which is not what I want to do. It's surprisingly satisfying when they're growing and you know you're keeping them alive and all that stuff. I do enjoy it. Are you getting broody? <laughs> You might recognize this from the last video. Um, what we're looking at is um, there's sand in there, and in the sand I've put a bag, um, a very fine mesh, which just allows water through. It doesn't allow anything else through. And on the top is black beads that stops um, mosses and things growing on the sand. And in that is the soil, which I collected across the country. And in that are two tiny little heather seedlings. Um, it's all in there to make sure that the, the water percolates through nicely and evenly throughout the soil, because otherwise if, if it was just soil in there, it might just fall through and end up in the bottom of the tray. I took a long time doing it. I have to rotate them every week because um, there's a slight chance that there's a, sl a difference in temperature only by maybe a quarter of a degree across here. There might be a little bit of different air movement. Um, the lights might be ever so slightly different. So just to keep it all perfectly scientific and sound, I rotate them every week. That takes a little bit of a while. Um, that's Oak Tree Heath, Scotton Common, Sherwood Forest. It's where I collected them from. And they're numbered because I've got to make sure that all the other analysis I did on the soil um, corresponds to which soils I'm growing the plants in. Um, something that's really exciting um, already, even though um, we're only a month into the, the project, is that um, here, this one you can see here, which is Thimbleby Moor, um, is, I, I know for a fact, it's high nitrogen deposition um, by the model that we used. And you can see how big the heather plant is there compared with maybe this one, which is lower nitrogen deposition, and you can still barely see the heather plant. So this is what we're trying to prove. And to see it so quickly, it's quite exciting. That, that is exciting, is it? Yeah. <laughs> of course it is. This is what I do. This is what I'm looking for. Um, these little things. is not expecting something to explode or blow up or anything like that. It's, this is exciting to me um, because it's showing what I hoped it would show. A number of arguments I had with my advisor about this thing because um, what we wanted to use was a little push one. Uh, you know when you've got a, um, a keg of beer and you've got a push button. Now I wanted to use one of those on a tube so that I had more um, control. But of course doing that 200 times, it doesn't do much of your hand. And plus I had to lean over, which isn't great either. So I said, why don't I get a little tube that I can use? And I got this and his face when I got it, it's like, you can't use that, it's too big. You haven't got the, the, the control that you need. But I think if you watch, I think I, I made the right decision. Um, that is the um, distilled water and deionized water, in fact. So that's the ultra pure water that I bring over every week or so. Um, it's the purest water you can come across, really. So, a little bit of water, a little drop in the soil because they're still quite small. Normally, when they're a little bit bigger, I'll water the, just the sand which is underneath these black beads. But at the moment, because they're still little babies, I have to give them a little drop on the top of the soil as well. I normally have music on in the background when I'm doing this. What music do you normally have? Oh, I don't know if I want to tell you. I'll be subject to ridicule by all my friends. I don't have the best taste in music, apparently. Couldn't be worse than mine. Go on, share with the world.
Uh, do you know PWL and sort of that sort of stuff, 80s? Uh, stuff that you can pretty much describe it that you don't need an instrument to play it. So you need a keyboard and a computer, and that's music. So that's the type of music I like. Yeah, maybe you'll be a bit of ridicule. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have said. Um, because it is ultra pure water, I'm not adding nutrients. So the plant will take up just as much water as it needs. So as long as it has enough water, it should be okay. Um, it would be slightly worrying if I watered one far more than another um, and one got dry, that wouldn't be good. And these should be growing for about six months. So while I'm doing the field work over the summer, I'm hoping that um, colleagues will water them properly when um, I'm in the field. I was going to ask, what happens when you go on holidays and stuff like that? Um, I have to plead with uh, my colleagues and um, say to them, please water my plants while I'm away and I'll buy you a beer afterwards. It's a general theme. And that's it for another two days. Just stick that back, close that, and then I have to do a few little environmental readings. So the first piece of equipment I've got is this, which is a light meter, somewhere around there. I've got about 263, that's a lot. This connects to our three thermometers, so it's logging all the time, and I can then download this onto a computer and see how the temperature varied. This, believe it or not, is better than the electronic equivalents. So just wet it a little bit. And um, I'm like, yeah, they're fine. Relax. It's all is good. It's not right, so we leave this for a minute or so just to draw in the air. 16 on the wet wick and 19 on the dry and 19. Hmm, that might be right. Should be higher than that. Yeah, according to this, it's 45%. That's quite low. You can have your sleep advisor yeah, right now. <laughs> I won't let him watch this video. Uh. <laughs> uh, yes, it, um, it, the hum humidifier goes up and down. It will work out, because it's got a sensor, when the humidity has gone lower. And it'll turn on and the humidity will suddenly rise because it pumps out steam and you can see it steam up. Um, but at the moment it's quite low. That's because we've had the door open.